Good morning, you heathens. Today we're talking glows. I'm not gonna beat around the bush and go over the nodes that already exist inside DaVinci Resolve, because if you're like me, you've probably already gone in there and typed in glow to see what your options are. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna talk about some options that you might not know about, and then we're gonna actually go ahead and create our own Glow node. And then I'm gonna show you how to save this as your own node so that you can use it later whenever you want in DaVinci Resolve. Now I've got DaVinci Resolve open here and we're actually gonna be operating in the Fusion page. If you're here for the color page, I'm sorry. I'm not as familiar with the color page, but I'll put a link or a channel in the description that could probably provide you the answers that you're looking for. So. Let's go ahead and hop into the Fusion page. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new Fusion composition. Open Fusion. Let's go ahead and get our composition all set up. And if you're newer to Fusion as well, I actually have a separate video that takes a little bit more time covering things in Fusion. So for today, I'm gonna to assume you know how to use Fusion and how to get around this, uh, this page in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so we got our Fusion composition set up here with a couple of examples for you guys to look at. Uh, a floating PNG, we have a rectangle that we've set up that could be set up to look like some kind of laser effect or you know energy effect, and then uh, a text that you might wanna add some glow to. And like I mentioned, I'm not gonna cover the glows that are already within DaVinci Resolve, so like the soft glow, when you add that, this is what that looks like. What I am gonna talk about is some options that you might not know about, and then I'm gonna cover how we're gonna make our own custom glow node. Now, a lot of people are already familiar with this, but if you're not, there is a package manager out there called Reactor. Why did I say that so weird? Reactor, not Reactor, Reactor. I said that like Dexter's Lab or something. Now, in essence, Reactor will install free plugins into DaVinci's Resolve Fusion page that go beyond the standard set of nodes and effects that you have access to. If you'd like to learn how to install it, you can either just go to their website and download it, or I'll leave a link to Peej's video because he's got a video going over how to use it and some of the best plugins that you can use. But once you've installed it, what you can do is you can go up top in your Fusion page to Workspace, Scripts, Reactor, and then Open Reactor. Let it think for a second. And then it'll pull up this menu with all of these different tools that you can install into the Fusion page. And if I were to go up top to the search bar and type in Glow, you can see I've already got two checked on. And the two that I have checked on here are Fast Expo Glow and X Glow. And X Glow in particular is extremely powerful. Now the Fast Expo Glow node and the X Glow node essentially are stronger glow nodes that you can install into Fusion. So if I had unchecked these and I was installing them for the first time, all I would do, search for Glow, check on XGlow. It's gonna ask if you'd like to donate. I would encourage it if you can afford to, but I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Same thing with the Fast Expo Glow. Turn that on. And I believe both of these will work with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I could be wrong there, you can double check me, but I believe these will work with the free version. And then I already have mine installed. If you don't have yours installed, go ahead and hit Unstall, close this, and then once you've installed them, you will need to restart DaVinci Resolve. And now once you've reopened DaVinci Resolve and reopened your Fusion page, you can now go to your No Tool menu by hitting Control Space, typing in X Glow. Add that, and bam, look at that, isn't that sweet? I find that x -Glow in particular works with things that you want to have an energetic effect. It's got a bunch of options over here that I'm not, I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I mean, you can play with them, you can change your color, the size, the gain. It just gives you a lot more controls over your Glow node. I will say though that if I were to add this to all of our guys, <laughs> you can see what it kind of what it does. So what I end up finding with the XGlow node is that it is very strong and very bright, and obviously you can reduce the gain and the size, but it doesn't tend to be very subtle. All right, and so we can try the same thing with our fast expo glow. Go and add that, let it think, and boom, there you go. It's a lot more subtle, and obviously, again, you can crank crank the gain up see what happens with it, but it's it's not quite as explosive as X-Glow. Now, before you go off and start to use both of these nodes, I will say that both of them are very resource heavy. Even when I add just one node, it, it takes a while to think and figure stuff out. So they're really strong. They do some really cool things, but it, if you don't have a beast of a computer and I don't, 
it can drag down whatever you're running, which is why we're gonna make our own node. It's not gonna be quite as strong as the Xglow, and it's not gonna have as many tools as Fast Expo, but it's gonna work really quick and it's gonna look eh, pretty good. Now, if you've ever worked in Photoshop or done graphic design work, in essence, we're gonna apply a similar principle in that we're going to layer our glow nodes to give us a more full picture. We're gonna start with something that's very bright and strong in the center and then decrease our strength as we move out in the layers. But we're gonna do some sneaky things in DaVinci to make our life a little bit easier. So let's talk about that. So let's start with our starting node and I'm gonna use the soft glow node. You could start with some of the other nodes within DaVinci Resolve, but I just tend to find that the soft glow node works for what I'm going for and it runs pretty quickly. So it's low memory heavy. And like I said, we're going to increase our gain to I'd just go all the way. Let's start at five. We can always uh, bring it back if we want to. And I think we're okay with the glow size right now, but if you wanted to, you could bring this down just a little bit. Maybe we could go with a nice six right there. So we've got some nice, some nice fuzz around our uh, rectangle. Now here's where some of the sneaky stuff comes in. I'm going to select our soft glow node that we've created here. I'm gonna hit control C to copy it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit control shift and V. Or if you wanted to, you could right click and go to paste instance. But what we've done is we have created a copy of our glow node that is linked to our soft glow node. And you can see it's connected by this teal line to the two. And all that means is that when I change the gain or size of one, I change the gain or size of the other. So if I were to display both of these over here on the right hand side, right? When I change the size of one, it changes the size of both. Now, why might this be useful? Well, if we wanted to mess with properties like the threshold so that we've got some different outer glow looking effects, or if we wanted to change the color, so maybe we wanted to change the glow to green, now they're all linked. And if I haven't mentioned it already, how we're going about creating this triple glow is gonna be completely up to you. So if you wanted to, you could leave all of these properties linked, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to right click on the gain and de-instance that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the glow size. I'm gonna right click and go to de-instance. And the reason I do that is because what we're going to do is we're actually going to decrease the gain to, I don't know, maybe we could go to like a nice 1.5 and we're going to increase the size. 35 is looking okay. I mean, you know, change it however you like. And if I were to do a before and after, before we have just, you know, a little fuzz, and now that we add this second soft glow, you can see what happens is it's a, a little bit more full and we start to taper off the glow. So it starts to leak a little bit more onto our domain. So I actually might bring our glow size down to maybe one. I think that looks a little bit better to me. And all we're gonna do now is the exact same thing one more time. I'm gonna select our original soft glow node, copy it, and then I'm gonna hit Control Shift V after the instance of our first node to create another instance of our soft glow node. And now we've got quite the, uh, quite the bar here. But just like we did for that first instance, I'm going to de-instance our gain, de-instance our glow size so that we can play with those individually. I'm gonna bring down the gain for this last one to uh, something very close to zero, so maybe 0 0.2, but I'm gonna crank the glow size all the way up. And you can even go past 100 if you wanted. A lot of values on the fusion sliders, you can actually type in past the min and max that it defaults to. Let's start with 130. Right in there. Let me go ahead and split up my preview window and I'm gonna display our final result here on the uh, the right hand side. I'm gonna tap one. So now we can see our starting rectangle and our final version. And if I cycle through our soft glow nodes, you can see how this builds out. So we start with our initial uh, fuzz glow. We have that taper out. And the last node is a little more subtle, but if you look around the outside edges, you can see it leak into that space. And that just helps with compositing it into whatever video source that you're working with. Let me go ahead and collapse our preview window again. And again, if you wanted to, you could customize this however you would like. You could incorporate some different glow nodes into this chain or add another soft glow node, whatever you wanna do. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this node chain so that if we wanted to, 
we can go to our tool menu and type in triple glow. And you see, I already have our node here saved, ready to go so that I can use this whenever I want. Now, those of you who've watched the wobble video and are coming to this one already know what we're gonna do. We're gonna select all of our nodes, right click, go to macro, and then create macro. Macro, create macro, boom. And it's gonna pop up this, <laughs> this crazy looking menu. Now, if you've never created a macro within DaVinci Resolve, it can definitely be a little bit intimidating, but that's okay. In essence, all that we're looking at is our three nodes here, right? We have our soft glow and our two instances, and then it gives you options for what properties you would like to save for those nodes. So if I quickly scroll through here, we have uh, the filter type, which is up top here, turning on the red, green, and blue alpha channels, and then our threshold gain, glow size, etc. So by default, it's going to have our first nodes input checked on, which is what we want because we want it feeding into our first glow node. And then again, completely up to you for what you choose to check on. I'm going to turn on our filter settings, the threshold, the gain, the glow size, and then the blend option, and then our red, green, and blue alpha glow scale, because that'll allow us to change the color of our glow if we want to. Okay, let me go ahead and collapse our first soft glow and open up the first instance. This one's gonna be a little bit easier because all we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the things that we've left different, which is gonna be the gain and the glow size because all of our other properties are already linked to the first glow node, which is why it's kind of nice to make this an instance because now all we have to do is check on the things that we have de-instanced. So we have the gain and the glow size for our first instance. Go ahead and collapse that. Let's open up our last instance and you can see it's got the output checked on, which is what we want because we want whatever is coming out of this node to be fed back into our node branch tree system. And then again, all we're gonna check on is the gain and the glow size. Perfect, that's it. So now we're gonna name it. I'm gonna name mine Triple Glow because, I don't know, I'm not more creative than that. And then once you've come up with a name for your macro, you can either go up top to File and Save, or you can go up to these three dots in the corner and hit Save As. And now it should take you to DaVinci Resolve's macro folder. If it doesn't, I will put the file path in the description, but you can see I've already got some stuff set up and saved. I've got my own folder with my own macros in here saved. I would recommend naming it the same name as whatever you've named it in the menu and then hit save. Once you've saved it, you can go ahead and close this. And now what I can do is I can delete these and hit control space, type in triple glow, and you can see we have our new triple glow node. Boom. And now if you look over here in our inspector tab, you can see we have all the settings that we checked on. And so we can play with our glow size if we needed to change things for a specific whatever, whatever you're working with. But the nice thing about this triple glow node is it doesn't use a lot of memory to operate within fusion land. So you can slap it onto whatever you want and it ends up looking pretty good. So let me go ahead and delete this real quick and let's turn back on our other guinea pigs. And let's go ahead and add our triple glow to each of them <laughs> and you see it's it's pretty strong uh, with some of the other options so we can turn down the the initial gain and then maybe we can turn down the gain and size of our other nodes right so you could change this to be whatever you like but this is actually the glow that i use when i do captioning and text so if i zoom in on our little bagel uh, text over here if i were to change this to a nice uh, orangey yellow now you get more of a gradient glow to your text and so this ends up working pretty well with like TikTok and YouTube short captions. Let me know if you guys have more questions or if I didn't go over something specifically that you were looking for and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.